What makes a family? Is it your blood relatives, your friends, your children? Maybe it's all those things, or none of them. Maybe it's as simple as what you make it. In the 1950s, Americans had an average of four children. Now in 2022, they're having less than two, and some, none at all. I just feel eh about it. So that's what it is. It is, is um, it's an apathy towards motherhood. Am I a bad person for just simply loving my life as it is? I'm a good person who does a lot of good things in the world, and this is one thing that I, I don't wanna do. So what does that mean? And should we care? Do falling birth rates make a difference? Well, depends on who you ask. Some experts say it's one of the biggest threats facing our society. An older population means fewer workers and less people paying into programs like Social Security and Medicare, which could lead to their collapse. I definitely don't think that economic collapse is a reason to have a baby. I don't want to tell someone on their 18th birthday, I'm just so glad you were born so that corporations could have your your labor. Thank you so much for contributing. To, like, I no, no. Are there models that we could create that don't rely on using women's reproductive organs against their will? I, I believe that the answer is yes, we could do that. Other experts say there's always time to plan for less children. Another perspective is that having a kid causes strain on the environment. If you ask millennials or Gen Z uh, folks today, often what comes to the top of the list are things like a concern for the environment. Despite all of the hot takes, of course we still need to keep generations going at a stable rate. Both sides agree that birth rates are declining and that could be a problem. So how do we encourage a healthy baby boom? But other countries like France and Scandinavian countries have been able to slow down the fertility decline by just giving households a lot of incentives for having children and for supporting mothers, mothers in the workforce. And that's also what we see China doing now. Population decline is happening. It's just important how fast it happens. If we could give resources to women to make their choices, it could potentially be a solution to an imbalanced population. Do you have access to the kind of services you need once you have a child to make sure that that child and your family are gonna have the kinds of supports that they need? To fill the gap of young workers, our government could try automation or immigration. While the US population is declining, other countries are still having a lot of kids. So not only do immigrants provide labor to fill in needs that we have in the economy, immigrants also fill in the age gap because immigrants are usually very young. It's also important for governments to give higher wages to young people. When Japan faced one of the lowest fertility rates in the world, that was one of their solutions. So Japan, for example, went through 10, 20 years of massive public spending to create jobs for the young people so that they can earn more. How do we make sure that the young people can get jobs, that they can earn, so that even though that there are a few of them, you know, they have, they, uh, they have the same material well-being and the lifestyle as the elderly population while paying into the system and supporting the elderly population with fewer numbers. There are solutions, but are they enough? How concerned should we be? If fertility keeps declining, it will become problematic. But right now, it's not necessarily a big problem yet, but it makes sense for policymakers to, you know, to think about this and keep an eye on this. Because remember, the workforce in 20 years are the babies born now.